If you're a multi-passion creative like myself, you're probably facing a problem that a lot of new artists are facing. You decided to pursue art later in your life, and then now you're dealing with a really strong inner critic. Oh my god, somebody started way too late, he's so far ahead of me. Failure and a very fragile sense of self as an artist. There's other reasons people bloom late as artists. Some could be having very difficult childhoods. Are you still drawing? Can you put that away? Your chemistry teacher called, we need to talk. Stop dreaming and wasting your time and just focus on something that's useful and important. You know, you bought him that art set and that drafting table. Why are you surprised he's using it? I know, but I also bought him GTA 5. Doesn't mean I want him to go out there and bang hookers. <sighs> Dad? I'm gay. Oh no. Have you tried banging hookers? Thus, we pick up a lot of unhealthy coping mechanisms over the years that can have a huge impact on our creative self and our creative endeavors. Like valuing what other people think more than our own viewpoints. Because we value external validation and extrinsic motivation as opposed to our own desires and needs. <sighs> My art sucks. I suck. Actually, that looks pretty good. Really? Mm-hmm. My art's pretty good. One way this manifests is complete indecision when it comes to artistic endeavors and creative journeys. Hmm, I feel like drawing something. Uh, uh, uh. Especially ones related to what kind of job you want in the arts. There are a ton of jobs in the film industry. Like if you look at a call sheet, you're just like, oh wow, there's like literally 150 people here that I work with. All of them are filmmakers. Choosing filmmaker as a career didn't really narrow things down as much as I thought it would. And working on set, you meet a ton of people who are super passionate about what they do. Their passion can suck you in and you might find yourself doing something that was cool in the beginning but isn't really exactly what you want. Hey, hey, I hope this is a good time. Listen, I don't think I'm gonna come to work tomorrow. Uh, I just realized that the underwater basket weaving is not actually for me. Oh, uh, the, the president of the company is coming tomorrow? Uh, I'm losing you, bye. Being an engineer is great. If you learn anything in engineering school, is how to teach yourself how to do anything, which is great when you're trying to hoard all of these new skills, but when it comes to making a decision, it doesn't help in narrowing things down either. So as a multi-passionate creative, how do you strengthen your inner self and calm your inner critic? I decided to ask my therapist, and after a couple of sessions and going over my history and how I got to this point, I learned two important tips. Two tips. The first one is way easier than the second one. Affirmation. Now before you go, oh my god, someone read the secret 10 years too late. You have to understand that the way you talk to yourself has a huge impact on your life and on your reality. In psychology, the concept of reality bridging is understanding the connection between your thoughts and how they turn into feelings, how your feelings turn into emotions, and how your emotions turn into behavior. And if we know anything, that our behavior really determines our reality. Enter affirmation. Write down a list of qualities you have, and it's okay if they're qualities people told you you have, but write ones that you know you have as well. Don't be scared to flatter yourself, but also don't bullshit yourself a little too much. I'm sure that you have qualities that you admire about yourself, like your perseverance, or your creativity, or your <laughs> empathy, your strengths from having survived as long as you have. Even from watching this video, you know you're a curious person who's trying to improve themselves and improve their creative self. That takes courage. Once you've written a list of qualities, choose a goal you want for yourself. Don't get too caught up in this one. Let's say it's making a YouTube channel, writing a short film, finishing a painting, learning how to cook. Then stare at yourself straight in the mirror, super serious, and state that you can accomplish your goals because you have these qualities. Bridging. For example, I can finish this painting because I'm consistent with my work. I believe in my abilities because I am creative and smart. You need about 10 of these. Do this exercise first thing in the morning when you're looking at yourself in the mirror and brushing your teeth, and then right before you go to bed when you're brushing your teeth and looking in the mirror. Now, if you're feeling awkward or dismissive of this exercise, or you have this urge to just mock it, you're the one who needs it the most. The second tip is a little bit more elaborate of an exercise. It's called systemic desensitization. This exercise is based on Eric Erickson's theory of psychosocial social and psychosexual childhood development. 
To grossly oversimplify, the theory states that in our early and teenage years, we need to develop a sense of self and personal identity that is a function of our environment and how it responds to us and our interests. Success in this area leads to one's ability to discover one's true self and remain true to it, while failure leads to a weak sense of self, role confusion, and an inability to find one's place in life. Basically, if you have a weak sense of self, you might have a hard time taking yourself seriously or taking your own projects seriously and thus never really able to take them off the ground. You might be the ideas person. Ideas are great, but without follow through, you might just end up having more incomplete work and a general confusion about what you're supposed to be doing. You might be confused about what you really want versus what other people tell you you should be doing or tell you that you're really good at. The exercise to combat this involves closing your eyes, trying to relax, and then imagine in vivid detail doing the work needed to accomplish your goals. And when I say vivid detail, I mean really vivid detail. If you're a painter, imagine yourself taking the paint out of the tubes, putting it on the palette, mixing it, and starting the work. Even before that, try imagining how you came up with the idea and feeling really satisfied while doing it. Picture the strokes of your brush on the canvas. Imagine, in vivid detail, the entire creative process and how beautiful and wonderful and peaceful it is. One thing to note here is that you have to be careful and remind yourself not to imagine getting praise from other people, getting applause or admiration for what you're doing from others or winning awards. You have to imagine your own satisfaction. Imagine enjoying your own work. Imagine being proud of yourself as opposed to having others be proud of you or be happy with you. The point of the exercise is to develop a sense of self that is capable of creating intrinsic motivation for you to pursue your goals. I remember the first time I tried doing this, I imagined having a romantic partner telling me I'm doing a great Great job and then winning an award and then having a business partner telling me that I'm really really good at what I do and my therapist was like uh what are you doing and I said well that's what I'm that's what you told me to do and they said no you have to imagine those things coming from you the admiration coming from inside you have to imagine the satisfaction coming from inside and the validation coming from inside and to me it was like trying to imagine a color I had never seen before until I started writing it down and doing the exercise more consistently and then it became possible and I started feeling full from the inside full enough to pursue my own work doing this for 15 minutes a day really helped me get out of negative self-talk be consistent and diligent with my work while also being being kind to myself while following through on projects. Starting a creative journey takes a lot of work, but if you incorporate these two exercises into your practice, I know you'll get results. Remember, the process is the reward and the process is not easy. My name is Zaid Begamse. Thank you for watching.